for a while. We are just, as Dennis was saying, we're looking so forward to this week. I'm just looking forward to sitting and soaking in the presence of God the next seven days. When we were in worship, I saw something in the Spirit. And I'm telling you, I saw a foundation stones and I saw them cracking. And the Lord said this week, I'm breaking false foundations. There's a prophetic anointing here this week that is going to break false foundations. And you know the, the ministry of the prophet, that's what he does. He breaks in pieces. He plows. He breaks up. He digs up. He destroys. And then he plants. And this week, I just saw that in the spirit. I saw those foundation stones, ancient family curses, ancient foundation stones. And I just saw those hairline cracks. And I think this is part of it right here. You know, there ain't nothing that'll shake a foundation like a low frequency. There's nothing that'll shake a foundation like a low frequency. I remember years ago when they come out with those Bose cannons, those super low frequency subwoofers, they said they were literally cracking foundations and buildings with them. Well, I believe we're going to have some bad foundations broken down and some good foundations rebuilt this week. Amen? So lock in, and you are going to get officially in the next seven days glory fried. Yeah. Glory fried. Now, by next Sunday night, you'll probably be gone. <laughs> but it'll be good. Amen? It'll be good. So it's going to be a, a great week. And uh, we're going to kick it off tonight with uh, Pastor Mark Temperato from New York. And uh, come on up, brother. Thank you so much to Pastor David and Keong to have us down. And it, what a blessing. Let me tell you, man. Take care of your pastor and wife. Take care of them. People are always looking for perfect pastors. There aren't any. There aren't any perfect churches. And the day you join it, not perfect. It's just not happening. Get your expectations in the Word. If someone sticks it in your back, learn to forgive because the sticking on the back is going to happen quite often. Don't worry about that, man. In the dungeon of your mind, who do you have chained to the wall? You got to make some decisions. When you forgive someone, it sets you free, sets you free. Well, they deserve it. It's not about what they deserve. The Bible says the word, it's the word, it's the key. The Bible says, think on things that are true. What's true? Oh, they did that to me. That's not what's the truth. The truth is what the word of God says to get past it. That's the truth. It's not the reality of what's breaking in. It's the power that God gives you to step over to that other side by the power of God. And my, as our pastor says, Pastor Bob Nichols, they don't come any better. I tell you right now. You don't quit on the first day and you don't quit on the worst day. The devil's trying to kick people out. They're trying, he's trying to hurt people. You see it. I want to say hello to my my lovely wife, Rhonda. Love you, sweetie. My four children. Five, actually. David, my son David, married Samantha. What a beautiful young lady. And, you know, my son is always out there trying to witness to people and help people. And this young lady comes in, and uh, she got gloriously saved in the church. I mean to tell you, just serving God. And uh, David and Samantha, we love you. My daughter, Lisa, and uh, Michael, and Mark, all my family, we love you. I tell you right now, folks. The Bible says to be still and know that he is God. To be still, to slacken off, to get to know him. I just want to have a confession that's great and have a beautiful life and just go from glory to glory. That's great. But some of your glories end in a valley. You know, we think we're on the mountaintop all the time. Let me tell you something. Like David and Goliath, you meet him in a valley, you beat him in a valley, and you leave him in the valley. And you take his head home. We want to meet on a mountain. The mountain is where you're up there chilling 
yelling for victory. And then you come from the mountain in the valley and you meet your Goliath. Reason why we can't beat Goliath, because we're trying to chuck rocks from a mountain. Get in his face. Throw a rock that represents Christ. Our talent and our charisma means nothing. Nothing. It is the lie when Lucifer was kicked out of heaven. I say God created the first beat because he beat the devil right out of heaven. And I'm running this with right off the bat. You have to think about, the Bible says in a war broke out in heaven. What's with that? The most secure place on earth in heaven and Lucifer starts a coup with one third of the heavenly angels? You know, he had to be a moron. More on the side of not getting it. How do you overtake God? I mean, come on, think about that. That's how far you got to fall. One third. He was the musical angel. He didn't just play the organ, he was the organ. Every precious stone was his covering. The diamond, the topaz, the burrow, we can go on all about that. But one thing you have to remember. Down on this earth, the head musician in heaven was cast down with hot rebellion with one-third of the heavenly angels. Aren't you glad it wasn't Michael that fell? Aren't you glad it wasn't Gabriel that fell? But he did fall. And I'll tell you right now, this is something I'm working on in this book that I'll put out one day. Because uh, I don't see a lot of people teaching that, but I know it's out there. The Luciferian society in the music industry is out there doing their thing because Lucifer runs music here. You have to understand that. He's the God of this world. When you're all torqued off, I'm having a hard time. Because you're a piece of salt. You are powerful. That's why you have trouble with the devil. You're, you're, a, you're, you're trespassing, man. You're trespassing. You're here by the grace of God on a planet, a little dust ball that God threw Lucifer down at. It's got this little dust ball, man. What's with that? It's like he's big stuff down here. Yeah, without Christ, you're toast. But I'll tell you right now, when Jesus is your Lord and Savior, we don't have to be afraid. I don't care what the government's doing. I don't care what the laws are saying. It does not make one bit of difference. <laughs> Up in New York, they're doing guns thing, and everyone trying guns and all that stuff. Hey, man, they said, do you believe in gun control? Absolutely. I've always believed in gun control. I use both hands, and I hit exactly what I aim at. This is about knowing him as the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the key. Now, we can mess around all the day with the devil. And, you know, that's what he's doing. I got to give me some volume. Yeah, a little more volume there, brother. Yeah, keyboard there. A little more. Yeah, there it is. The devil. Oh, yeah, God. Uh, you want to mess with the devil? Oh, you want to mess with God? Yeah, I got to think about that, man. Moving on. Well, we're in a war. I mean, it's you. You see. I mean, you see it. You can sense it. But a lot of Christians are getting all upset. Oh, I don't know. The devil. The devil's doing this. And people go on vacation and they and they pray. Oh God, protect my car. Oh Lord, it won't get any flat tires. Thinking the engine will be good. It won't overheat. Thank you, oh Lord. And no. Stones will flow up and hit my windshield, blah, blah, blah. And the devil wouldn't think of half of that stuff if you wouldn't tell him. Right? <laughs> we want to be in faith. Have the power of God wrapped around your heart. If you don't, man, the devil sits there and he just laughs. And I tell you, when the devil begins to laugh, we have to understand. <laughs> and you think... What in the world is going on? Now, you can either out there and call on everybody. You think, you know, you can put the SOS out there. You, you can do all that, man. But I tell you, even a Superman. I mean, we're all looking to these fleshy things, right? There is only one answer. There is only one Savior. There is only one God. And that, right?
I built the largest drum set in the world for one reason, to worship God. How long have you been doing? Decades. Why does it get bigger? Because I've been impressed ever since I met him. <laughs> you can't make it too big. How can you make it too big? How? Oh, I got 210 symbols on it. 100, I, got it. I mean, we just, it's ridiculous. But worship, to worship him. See, I thought it'd be good, and I want to encourage Christians, go out there and do the impossible. It's good to make history, because then it gives you a platform to share his story. Make history. That way you can share his story. Jesus is the sole solution. They say, I never heard of that band. That's not a band, man. That's a statement. And everyone's trying to add things to Jesus. Right? Like a car. Ah, we'll put heated seats. We'll do this like an add-on. Yeah, we got to have Jesus in with us. Yeah, Jesus and. There's no Jesus and. All the religions and all these things, all, everyone has the answer. The answer is Christ. Simple. Well, you know, we got to be open-minded. Well, that's why you're a moron. <laughs> moron the side of not getting it. That's mine. I cover it that way, but you know what I mean. Look into the Lord. Sometimes we just don't get it. Sometimes we think God is speaking to us. We're talking about calling too. But you know, don't cast your pearl before swines. Don't confer with flesh and blood. If God tells you something, in a church course, you, spec uh, you talk to leadership, of course, always, it's always good. They're your friend, they're not your enemy. And I tell you, and I tell you right now, the bigger the pearl, the bigger the pig. You don't quit. I know times are tough. I know finance. How much have been having one of the hardest times the last few years? But you don't stop, you see. Well, it's a hard world. It will be a hard world because Satan is the god of it. We have power over all the power of the enemy. We must use that power. You just can't sit around and hope for the best, kick the can and go after it. It doesn't work that way. We got to have the power of God living inside of us to know what he has, who he is. Or you can just do the old ping pong thing your whole life. Oh, man. You think, well, every once in a while I like to get a strike. But it just seems that we're going from gutter to gutter. To have some strikes, maybe two, maybe three. I just rather keep moving on, right? <laughs> it's good. Ah, thanks. <laughs> Don't mute me, bro. <laughs> it's all about timing. It's key to look, to call upon Him. He loves you. Turn to your neighbor and say, He loves you. Well, I don't feel loved. I don't feel loved at all. Sometimes I feel he's so far away. He left town and has an unlisted phone number. He has not. He's waiting for you. But I'm going through a dry time. Welcome to the desert. If you're on your backside of your backside, wondering what's going on in the wilderness, it's in the wilderness where you win, man. If you can't win in the wilderness... You'd be slapped all around climbing that mountain. The mountain is something God puts you on. We're not super people. We just simply love the Lord. It's the power of God. There's no charisma in this stuff. That's the flesh. That's what the world does. There is a power, a strength. And God is moving. No matter what they tell you, God is moving. I just understand it. It just seems so hard. <laughs> I don't know if God is even here. He's here. He's in your life, right? And sometimes you just got to tell them right off the bat. No more. I tell you, the devil, he wants to make a <laughs> out of you. 
But if you put on Christ and you hide the word in your heart that you won't sin against him, and you might have to change some friends, but they certainly will change you. Sometimes you have to make a stand. Something happened to me many years ago, and I had to make that stand. I said, Lord, I'll do whatever you want. But before those years, I grew up in a little town called Avon, New York. It's about uh, on the Canisius Lake, maybe an hour from Buffalo. And people think, you know, yeah, testimony. You know, your testimony is more who you are now than who you were then. And we think, well, you know, I, never, I was never a drug addict, and I was never a drunk, or I was never a whore, or I was a never this. You know, I don't seem to have a testimony. The best testimony is to have never known the devil or his ways. That's a great testimony. You don't know if God said yes or mess. He said his word to call upon him. Mm. A lot of Christians sometimes, I don't know if I even have a good testimony. Man, I tell you, to keep yourself pure and to love God. I know, I know we're outnumbered. But in the spirit, they've been slaughtered as far as the power of God. Now, God loves the world, right? God so, and he still loves the world. Someone was nailing the other day. These people were out there doing homosexual acts and things like that, and they were just railing. Let me tell you something. I don't like the whole hate gospel. I don't like the signs and all the rubbish bashing people all the time and this, and they speak bad. Let me tell you something. Everybody we don't think is serving God right now, they're not dead yet. That is still the world God loves. That's key. We're not saying we condone anything that goes on, but what we're saying, that the love of God is key. Love people, man. Love them. Encourage people. He was all oh, the druggies and the this and the that. And the, hey, man, these, Jesus loves people. God loves people. He's not mad at everybody. He loves you. That's the message. God so loved the world. God so loved the world. God so loved the world that he gave. Intake, he gave. Mm. I tell you, you don't have to be a drunk to minister to a drunk. I tell you that much. You do not. You don't have to be bit by a rattlesnake to know what poison is. I just, if I just had more experience in the world, I, I might be able to minister to people. You minister to people not off your experience, but off the power of God. And if the grace of God had cleaned your life up, all the better. Sometimes we think we have something to do with it. We do not accept saying, yes, Lord. Because if not, we take a little credit for something. I'm so cool. I really play great drums, man. Look at me. You're dead. You're dead in the water. That's what Lucifer does. Watch me. Praise me. Then he raises up people. People getting mind control techniques as a kid that are famous music musicians today. We think they think that some of these musicians or that some of these actors are out there. They're always falling down. They're always getting out there and rehabs, and they always look terrible sometimes. That's because a lot of them are going through mind control tech things in their own to keep them famous. You don't think Lucifer makes people famous for nothing. The world has their musos, and God has him. I'm God's drummer. I play for him. I'm not the only one, but I am one. I am exclusive. I play for him. Because of him and to him. Amen. And that's just the way it is. Amen. Because he's worthy. I spend years just worshiping at night because he's worthy. No songs on albums yet. Some songs don't go on albums. Al songs are made to go to God. <laughs> Not yet. You take the music and you put it in heaven. When God brings it back, then you put it on plastic. That's just an opinion I've had since 80-something. Why? Because that's why we have a lot of music that's not anointed, but tremendously talented. But it is not the talent that destroys the yoke. It is the anointing. I was brought up Catholic. I went to Catholic school. I was... Oh, I just, you know, I mean, they used to be really upset with me. Man, the nuns used to whack my hands for tapping all the time. Maybe they didn't think I was, no, I was going to grow up and be a drummer, right? They didn't, grow, they didn't know I was going to grow up and build the largest drum set in the world. And we have a little bit different of a church. 
That's why I love about Pastor David. Put 22A up there for me if you can. And uh, I want you to see, this is uh, the inside of the church. I just want you to see there, we got couches and stuff. And uh, my, on the white drum set on the right is my 20-year-old's. The uh, drum set on the left is my 26 years old. I have a couple other ones that play keyboard. My wife plays. And uh, big drum set in the middle. Make no mistake who we serve. Make no mistake who we play for. Make no mistake that we're on this earth, not by accident. When on this earth, you got to think in army strategy. You have to know battle. You have to understand battle. Because when you go through stuff, you'll understand why. Why is this happening to me? That's not the question. How will I grow from this? It takes broken clouds to make rain. Broken grain to make bread. It takes a broken ground before you put the seed in. It takes a broken alabaster box before the perfume comes forth. There is no shortcut. But if I get a lot of money, I'll be anointed. You'll be an idiot. And you'll have a bowl or two of stupid every morning. Success is not something to achieve but overcome. The only part of the Bible you truly believe is the part that you obey. And if the Bible has not changed you, it has not reached you. There will be a change. You will repent. When you repent, that doesn't mean, oh, Lord, when you repent, you ask forgive. You don't do, you know, 360. And then go the same direction. When you repent, the Bible says... That means you forsake, you obtain a new position with the goal in view. You leave where you were and you step away. Step away from the sin. Because it will never leave you. Unless it just leaves you bankrupt, dead, and miserable. It is knowing the adversary. Four kinds of ground. Three of them didn't work. 25%, you got your chance in the ground, how you lay that seed on good ground. The ground is your heart, how you hear it. You got to lay the seed. Get the seed of the word in your life. It's not enough just to go to church and hang around. You got to get the word in because the word is a seed. Year after year, you put that in, it begins to weed out things in your life you don't even know exists beautiful. I just know how to do it. The Word does it. The Word does it. But in faith, you stay in faith. Moving forward. Mm. Or we can just play church. Right? We can do the little, you know... uh, saying man please don't gag me with a rake don't pass toe tags out at the door in churches get the power of God on you because we will not last in the end days without the power of God he said don't you think you're a little crazy I used to be crazy but I'm okay now right yeah to infinity and beyond (laughs) oh we can turn church into this Or we could just be like everything else. Well, you know, I'll do whatever I want in life. <laughs> Won't work. Won't work at all. I don't care what the pastor says. I think I know exactly what I'm... <laughs> really? Hmm. I don't think I got to give. I can give 6%. God will bless me. <laughs> See, we try to make up our own rules. It's bad enough that religion's out there making their own Bibles up and books and adding to the word. What's with that? The Bible should be enough. Well, you know, we want to have our... Ah, come on, man. Get into the Word. Get into the Word. No wonder everyone's going through a hard time. It's just like, oh, my goodness. No matter what goes on, it's like being in a dentist chair. 
it's like, oh, I'm just not into that. Just remember, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Ling, 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 ling. Sometimes you say, yeah, my life, man. I remember when I was in the Catholic Church, I it always had this atmosphere, man. It's cool, like a woo atmosphere. I was an altar boy. I used to drive the priest nuts, man. We used to have this bell, and he'd lift the chalice up, and I would ring the bell. Ring. I had a revelation one day. If I didn't stop ringing, the dude couldn't bring the thing down. <laughs> so it's like, ring. He's like, looking at me like, I'm going to get you with that robe afterwards, man. <laughs> one time I was in confession, you know. I was in there and I was saying, uh, Father, I want you to forgive me. And he says, uh, I'm not saved yet. But I was in there and I'm saying, he says, he says, because I used to clean the rectory. I threw a cat off a balcony. He says, you what? He says, sir, he says, what happened? I said, the cat was fine in a bit. It was fine. And I said, well, let's know, but it was your cat. It was an erection. <laughs> uh, cats are cool, man. I, right? Yeah. Cats have servants. Dogs got masters. Hey, let's move along. And when, and when I was in the Catholic Church, I remember they used to have this long pole with this cool mesh basket. And as a kid, they'd come in and they'd bring this baby in front of everybody. Woo. Woo. Right? Cool. So we used to put tape around our fingers backwards. How much you get? I got 25 cents. I got, I got five nickels. You did? What'd you get? Yeah. I remember those days. I'm surprised God let me live. Ooh. But I always wanted to play drums. So I'm going to share my testimony. I haven't shared it in many years. Uh, how Jesus changed my life. How I became his drummer. How I became exclusive for him. How I became absolutely out of my ever-loving mind in love with Christ. you got to be in love with him. you got to know that you know that you know. And a lot of people sometimes they haven't experienced that. You're going to experience, some of you this week, a touch of God upon your life. But you got to be hungry. Rhonda and I, we were in South Africa for almost 10 years, and we traveled from Cape Town to Johannesburg, and we preached all over the nation. The government gave us permission to enter all schools, universities, um, every naval, army base, marine, anything base that was there, any orphanage. I love orphanages, man. I, I take my drum set into orphanages every day and play for nothing. I loved orphanages. See three, four, five hundred kids, man. Uh, white, African, American, different races, just... Uh, you know, without moms and dads, and I'd make a thousand meatballs for them, and I'd play drums, and just, and that's a, I like that, because that's really religion, right? Religion is to take care of those that don't have maybe a mom or an orphan, and, and to keep yourself unspotted from the world, and to make sure the widows are helped. This is true religion according to the Word of God, not the religious rubbish we come up with, and then put God in front of it. I remember I played drums, you know, and mom and dad, even though I would say my wife, she was a, uh, a PK, and I was a BK. And she was a pastor's kid, I was a bartender's kid. And uh, so she, she used to be in Brazil with her dad, who was a pastor, and I used to be in a bar with my dad, where mom and dad were chefs for many years and had restaurants, so I grew up in that kind of business. And... Uh, <laughs> And I always wanted to play drums. And, and back then, they couldn't afford to get me a drum set. So the mayor came by selling World Book Encyclopedias. World Book Encyclopedias. I mean, you got to, that must have been really slow back there for the mayor hopping around selling World Books. But I remember Mr. Mulvaney. He was a cool guy. He came to our door, and he was selling the, uh, the World Book. And they were thick, and they were hard-covered, and they were different thicknesses. And, and I said to myself, I said, you know, Lord, and, and I wasn't saved at the time, but I, but, I, but I used to all the time, when I was just a, what's just a kid, you know, all the time I used to go on my, in my truck on the back at midnight, get stoned, have a pad, and just talk to God. I wasn't saved, but for something inside of me was talking to God. I just sit on the back of my blazer and talk to God. 
God, I love you, and I would do rudiments. And sit there for an hour and pray. And, I and I'm thinking to myself, all these years I look back to that. I always wanted to be the drummer. And so these books, my mother said, you know, you're going into high school now, son. Will you use this? And I took one of the books and I hit it. And another book. Yes, mom. I will, I will read these books, man. No problemo. These are encyclopedias, son. Well, you know what I mean. I, yeah, I think I use them. So we got and I took eight of them. And I set them at angles. And I made some big, thick things in shop class. And I started playing on these books. Man, I beat them so much, I beat the world right off them. I mean, I was playing those world books. And that's really just like I played drums. My brothers were drummers. My Uncle Sam was a great drummer. My mama played some drums. A lot of my uncles were all musos or doctors or dentists or whatever. But we were musos. They were out there playing. 40 years, 50 years. I, I, I like that. It's, it's in our blood. But it's in my blood to worship him. Amen. There's no shortcut. Well, how do you know you're worshiping him? Because we're, because we're not worshiping the devil. We're using the name of the Lord and giving him all the praise and glory. And you're talking to him like he's here. Not like he's in the ceiling hiding out in the rafters. Oh, Lord, and he's, he's here. That's the reality. That's, we got to get a hold of that. He is here. Not going to be here. Not maybe here. The Apostle Paul, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is. Not one day will it be. Not if we pray enough, it will be. Not if we give all our money, it will be. It is the power of God now on the salvation. Right now. What, when is that? It, it's now, man. I don't have these wax. I got to wax them. It's slippery. I'm sweating here. I love it. You got to know. I played in a lot of different bands. I remember the first, the first car I got, we can put number one up there, Lime Green Dotson. <laughs> 1971. Come 1972, I bought a Vista Light, light blue. Remember those, Bill? Vista Light drums. You could see right through them. And I remember putting those uh, in that Lime Green Dotson. And that's how, that's how I started. I started to travel. I would sneak up and play my brother's set in the attic. I wasn't supposed to. Hope he's not watching. But I would play it a lot. Two, three hours a day. I was playing solos. Two or three hours. Just by myself. I began to find out why I did that. That I was made to worship God. That I'm a psalmist. That I was made on this earth to have a new song. Not a program song you're going to make money off of. A song that's new. I think what's happening, I've watched in the music field, a lot of people, they take the music and they throw it to the people and hopefully it'll ricochet up to God. Forget the people, man. Go straight to God and let the glory fall on the people. We've been trying to please man too much. Nah, if you don't play this, I'm not coming to your church. Well, don't let the door hit you with the good Lord split you. Because we will worship because we, we can't be wishy-washy now, man. We don't have the time. Amen. Times are hot. Christians are juggling hot bowling balls, man. They're having a hard time. You see they're having a hard time. And that's why the Word of God is true. I played in a lot of different bands, sometimes in four or five bands at once. My dad had a restaurant, so I was playing there quite often. So I was a professional drummer by 11 or 12, which means I get 30 bucks to play on a Friday night and a Saturday night. And uh, I was enjoying that. Then I started playing out four or five different bands. But I was 16, 17, and you can put on number two if you wouldn't. And I was a model for Kodak. You're going to have a good laugh. And, uh, <laughs> and number three, the next one, just to give you an idea here. That's Tony Tomato, very famous model. Uh, number four. And I'm thinking to myself, what a stuck-up look. Number five, God help me. And I was in Kodak uh, modeling for a couple years. I just found out that my nephew, I have a story, maybe I'll tell it. My nephew, I hadn't seen 40-some years, was on billboards all over the country in, a, in a, a marine uniform or whatever, and I found out that he was modeling for Kodak. Isn't that weird? That's very cool. And then I was playing in a band in 1972 called the Lamplighters. I'll show you that drum set on uh, this next shot here. Number six. I was 16 there in a quarter box, sax, and there's that clear drum set. And uh, had a lot of fun. I, I was always dressed sort of wild. I don't, I don't know if you can tell. 
People have been trying to change me ever since I was born. It don't work. We are who we are. I'm wired. I'm wired to worship. I'm wired to love God. Well, you're too extreme. Uh, well, look at God. The creator of heaven and earth. He's a decorator. Carpets the whole ground with grass. I don't know how you can walk outside and say, well, there is no God. Right. Who did this? Well, it came millions of years soup on a rock. Mm, sure it did. <sighs> I don't get it. People just don't want to believe. I saw every one of my children born. Right. <sighs> yeah. Thank you, Lord. Everyone. Every time I go, there's a God. It looks just like me or Rhonda or both. Made in his image. Didn't come out of frog, didn't change. Right? Evolution. Uh, if evolution is true. Fish would still be fish, wouldn't it? They would not be fish. What, what is with people? You've got to really think about this because it's a war we're in. This is not just ideas. And these are people who are sending a message on this earth. Don't look at it. You're just a human living here, man. If you are God's child, you are here with a purpose. God has a plan. You are important. He loves you. And he doesn't love anybody else more than you or less than you. He's equal in how he loves us. But yet his word allows us to grow so the right seeds can take the correct kind of ground. Sometimes... It takes a lot longer than planned. 20 years, sometimes it takes to be an overnight success. There are just, everyone must work through what they're doing. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You work it out. That word work out come back from the old Spanish silver mines where they had to go below the dirt and below the surface and get down where the silver was. You won't scratch around the surface and find the power of God. You have to go down. You got to dig down. I was in gold mines in South Africa. They take you down a kilometer, man. I saw why they charge so much for gold. I remember they had this brick of gold. And they said, if anybody could put one hand on it and turn it upside down, they could have it. All the big wrestler guys, everything, they couldn't even budge it. And I remember gold. One ton of rock, one ounce of gold. A lot of work. It's a lot of work to be a Christian sometimes. You don't work it. But their work involved meaning you do the work of the Lord, working out. Work it out, man. Work it out. I do that. Work it out. Because while we're arguing and fussing with each other, each other, the devil is laughing. He is just out there, just laughing, and you know he's laughing. <laughs> or I will give you a nice life. Or I will give you a nice life. You're trying to get away. And when God wants to close that door, let him close it. Don't stay there. Now, if you want to be at the first church of the... Or you want to be at the church of the... I don't know which one you want to be at, but I want to be at a place where the power of God is moving. If you can't get touched in this church, you need to check your heart out and go on a Holy Ghost heart hunt. Well, I don't like it. I just can't. Be, that's because you're miserable. Misery needs company. But if you let that go, just let it go. We're not saying that all your problems disappear. But we're saying your trust in who you trust in becomes solid solidified and the one who made you the one who does not make mistakes did he make a mistake when he saved you no i remember back then i was spending you know three to five hundred dollars a week on drugs and uh, i didn't really know what was going on I, you know i believed in god but i didn't have any word in me none i remember Do dolly parton was coming to canada you can put uh, number seven up and just leave it a bit thank you Jessica, bless you. Dolly Parton was coming to Canada, and uh, we had a connection to be able to open up for her at the Sheridan Brock Ballroom on the Rainbow Bridge. And in the meantime, we were practicing with Meridian, and the Chris, the one in the middle, came to practice one day, and he says, I can't play with, us any, with the band anymore. Whoa, whoa, what do you mean? I said, I can't do it. I've been saved. You've been what? 
Because I've been saved. I can't play in the band any longer. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, you, that's an, I found, what do you mean you found Jesus? When was he lost? I, I said, hey, man, you believe, I believe, we're all believing. He says, I'm sorry, I'm done. The guy walked away from the band. We were going places. I mean, before we leave on a tour, this guy just, I said, he says, I'll be praying for you, Mark. I said, don't do me any favors, man. I got torqued and moved to Dallas. I thought, I'll get in music, I'll, I'll go down there. I'm praying for you. Mm, thank you. Well, I bought an old car, right? And I, I didn't have a lot of money, and I was, I was playing constantly and working. I was a hard worker growing up in school. I, I, I like doing that. Because, you know, I the kids today, they want their mom and dad to do everything. Get out there and work, man. Everybody wants, kids today, sometimes they want uh, an above average job with above average salary, but they don't want to first be an above average person. They have an above average handshake. They have an above average look in the eye. Right? Be diligent. Be honest. Do what other people are not doing. Yeah, but they get, if they lie, they, they get things quicker. Ah, uh, but it turns to dust. You'll take that diamond and put it in your pocket, it'll turn to dust. Unlike the word of God, you'll hear it and you put it in your pocket as a little rock, and one day in your life you'll pull it out and it'll become a diamond. There's a whole different way of looking at it. The word, the word of God. I'm gonna give you a lot of word, man. I know you get a lot of word here. I just pop things in and as it comes to my heart. Uh, to tell you, God is so beautiful how he teaches each and every one of us. I remember when I got a car, I ripped all the seats out of it. It was rusted underneath. I put a mattress in there, and I put all the boxes in there, and I went down to Dallas with this guy named Ed. They were driving. It's like 6 o'clock in the morning, and I'm driving. I got a pound of marijuana under the seat. Okay. I'm not saved yet, so don't stone me. So I'm going... <laughs> I shouldn't use that word, stone. Huh? Anyways, I, I was... <laughs> I was pushed, I had it on the seat, and I'm going down the road, and all of a sudden, a police, a state trooper, pulls right up next to me, waving at me. He says, I look behind, my whole car is on fire. The axle broke through the rust and started the mattress on fire. So now, I got this trooper on the side of the road, right? Oh, yeah. I was blazed, too. And, you know, he, and I think he knew it. And I said, hey, officer, how you doing, man? He says, hey, son, your whole car's on fire. I said, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> and we got out. We pulled all the boxes out. We put the thing on the side of the road. It's, bur it's smoldering now. We put everything back in. I don't know how we did it. And he said, you know, you all have a good day. I'll make sure it gets picked up for you and uh, have a safe trip. I'm <laughs> thinking to myself, Okay. Thank you, sir. We will. But that could have been drastically, uh, our lives could have been drastically changed a little bit, you know? I'm not saying doing wrong is right. I'm not saying doing wrong, you'll get away with it. But I tell you, if your heart is moving towards something and God's got a plan for you, you might get in some stuff. But I tell you, God will pull you right out and he'll make you new, absolutely brand new. If the old stuff is hanging around in your heart because you let it hang, man, you're letting it hang. Don't let it hang. I forgive him, but you know, no, no, no. Let, let it go, man. Let it go. You'll be bitter. You won't get better. So this is what happened. I got there. I became the assistant manager of a men's clothing company. And uh, sorry, I have to use a curse word. I had to work. As a musician, I wanted to play, but I, I got a curse again. Sorry, I had to work. So I started working 40 to 50 hours a week. And I started, I got the audition from all these drummers, Deanna Winter and Winter Flight, the Edgar Winter brothers, their sister. And man, she could sing. And so I got that. I was a decent drummer, and that was nuts. And so I got that, so I started practicing, because we have a Caribbean cruise booked for, I think it was two or three or four months. We were the main band on the Ocean Liner. We had a tour of the Playboy Clubs. And... Uh, we were going to be in Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas. So there's a lot of bookings and cool things were beginning to happen. I'm not saying I'm proud of any. I'm just sharing with you what my life was before I met him so you begin to understand a little bit. And uh, so we got on a two or three month practice schedule. And at one of the practice, practices, this girl came up to me named Marcia. Mm, I thought to myself, she says, are you Mark? I said, yes, I am. She says, Mark, hi. I I'm Marcia. 
I have a friend of mine that, that told me that God brought you here to Dallas for a reason, that he has a ministry for you. He brought you here. I said, I drove here, man. <laughs> I don't remember God saying anything to me or bringing me anywhere. Well, God brought you here. The next practice again, she comes up to me. She says, Mark, my friend was speaking to God again today. I thought, oh, no, another airhead. Oh, help me, Lord, these Christian people that are here from God. <sighs> And, and I said, she knows God spoke to her. God has a great ministry for you, and he has brought you down here for a reason. I said, whoa, 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 man. I'm just not into that. She said, I'm telling you, Mark, things are going to happen. I said, what's your friend's name? She says, oh, my friend's name is Orby. Orby. So God spoke to Orby about me, and you want me to buy this. <laughs> Get out of my face, man. But you know how God will woo you? You know God loves you, he woos you. He's never beating on you. That's the devil, he does that. Well, you beat on yourself. God will love you. He'll tell you a secret. The goodness of God will lead you to repentance. Did you catch that? Goodness is the leader here. Leads you. You repent. The goodness of God leads you to repent. Not tragedy. The goodness. Now we'll repent during tragedy too. Uh, yeah, we'll do that too. That's like automatic. Help me, Lord. Well, I see the goodness of God lead people to repentance. Just the power of God, the love of God come on them. I can't get any sound. <laughs> ah. The goodness of God. Who say the goodness of God? Leads you to repentance. Why are you mad at people? You think God get them? God loves people into the kingdom. I know He'll use whatever is at hand, but God's a good God. People need to make that statement true in their life. That He is not that person they think He is. That He loves us. Amen? Amen. No matter what. So, one day, God is trying to get my attention. My roommate left for two days, right, uh, at that time, but I needed $52.50 for a car payment. Everybody say $52.50. And 50 cents. Do you know that sometimes that's a lot of money if you don't have it? You ever been on a phone and didn't have a quarter? A lot of money, isn't it? You got billions of quarters at home, but at that moment is when it counts. Yeah. Mm, doesn't matter what you got at home. So I thought to myself, well, I don't know how I'm going to do this. So we were partying one night outside. I had, a, uh, I had a nice pool right there outside our apartment. And uh, we were, you know, were dancing on grills and having ribs and doing all sorts of things. And I used to, you know, all the things I used to be doing out there. And uh, there was this cat that walked by, right? Cat walks by all of us out there. We're partying. It's like midnight. This cat walks by. I thought, let's throw it in the pool, right? Wow. <laughs> but inside of me, I said... No. Inside, something said, take the cat and put it in your kitchen and give it some milk. I'm thinking to myself, no. I... So I did. And they said, what, what's wrong with you, Temporado? I don't know. For some reason, I feel to take the cat and give it milk. Yeah, but you're the first one to give it scuba diving lessons. I know. And I like cats. I really do. But sometimes they're a trip. We had one cat ate all our tinsel on a tree. Not all of it, but a bunch of it. She looked weird later. Anyways, that was weird. That cat got in the tree. Where's the cat? It's in the tree. Yeah, that's great. Nice kitty. So... This cat walks by, I put it in there, and I'm sitting out there, and we're partying, right? And I'm sitting there, taking a hit, and something hit me in here and says, laundry room. I went, what? What was that? I took another hit. Anybody out there smoke? Ah, 
gotcha. Anyway, I remember, yeah, yeah. And they would say, laundry room. I looked at my friends. I said, which one of you guys are laundry rooming me, man? I'm sitting here, and I feel like i got to go to the laundry room. He says, temporarily, I think you're smoking too much. No, I just started a few hours ago. No, I wasn't really a drinker. No, I didn't drink at all. I, wasn't, I just wasn't a drinker. I, I'm just saying, man, I, something's laundry room in me. Maybe i got to do my laundry. I don't know. So I, the cat's in there drinking. I get up, take it a few more hits. I'm going to go to the laundry rooms. Why? I don't know. Something, laundry room, way in there past the hair. I've never experienced that. Right? And, and so I'm thinking to myself, okay, I go to the first laundry room, machines and flies. That's it. Go to another laundry room, way down, nothing. I said, that's it, I'm going back, man. And then I thought, I'll walk across and walk into another one. So I go and I walk across into another one, and there it is. Lost cat, $50 reward. I thought, no. Can't be the kitty kitty I almost gave scuba diving lessons to. I go back and I call this dude up. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. Hello. Hey, man, I found this cat. He was there. He says, this is our cat. He says, I bought it for my girlfriend for Valentine's Day. She flew out from California. I gave her the kitty kitty, and just before she was to fly back out, the kitty kitty got out through the window and got lost, and she had to fly back to California without her kitty kitty. And everybody said, "Ah." And he says, that's our cat. That's the cat. And he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you 50. I said, no, no, man, keep the money. He says, no, no, no. I said, I'm going to give it to you. No, nah, keep it. He says, no, man. I says, thank you. And, uh, <laughs> but all I heard was laundry room. Who in the world is talking to me? I didn't know what was going on. I used to go to discos, man. Uh, number eight. Yeah, so cool. When I walked by my Coca-Cola, it froze. I mean, I, I, had this, I, I had this big afro during those years. I used to shake that baby. I don't know what happened. One day it just sort of fell off. You know? I say, I used to have waves. Now I got beach. So. I don't know. I figured maybe God likes my face so much he's creating a space for another one. I don't know. I used to go in discos, lime green underwear, lime green hat, no shirt, six cents Italian horn, and lime green clogs. And that's how I danced. And I was like a pro dancer. I mean, I, I used to dance. I like dancing. And uh, I, I look a little bit crazy. And yeah. They never threw me out. Not often, at least. Anyways. Well, I'd say, okay, I don't know what that laundry room. I'd go to bed at night and hear, laundry room. What was, where'd that come from? God. I don't, it was the Holy Spirit. He, I, he was talking to me. I wouldn't have thought of that, laundry room. Well, my roommate left for four days. Came back 45 days later. That was really nice. I, and I was stuck with the rent. I thought they were going to come take my big JBLs hanging up there, man. I had some really big speakers. I used to listen to Deep Purple hanging in there. I mean, the whole place would shake, you know. And I'm thinking to myself, I need $175. They're going to they're take my stuff and they're going to kick me out of this apartment. $175. A lot of money. We don't have it. $175. Well, I'm sitting at home wondering how in the world I'm going to pay this $175. And the phone rings. Ring, ring. I think to myself, oh, I don't want to answer the phone, man. I'm just not answer the phone. So I answered it, you know. I said, hello. She says, is, is Mark there? I said, yeah, man, this is Mark. She says, hi, Mark. This is Orby. I thought, oh, no. How'd you get my number, man? She says, God spoke to me today. Well, yippee. And she says, you know something? I want to come over right now and see you. I said, listen, man, I got things to do, places to go, and people to see. Maybe another decade. She says, no, God says I must come over right now. And she was so 
nice. You know some of those Christians? You just want to slap them. They're just like, oh, hi, Jesus loves you. I boom. I'm not interested because I'm not saved. Right? I'm in love with myself. I haven't met Christ yet. So I'm thinking to myself, she says, Mark, I'm coming right over. Give me your address. I said, I can't remember. It's an apartment. It was 777 Manderville Lane. Imagine that. First house we bought in South Africa was 7 Grace Avenue. That was pretty cool. It'd be nice if it was a lot of grace on that avenue. Anyways, I was thinking to myself, and I hung the phone up. I'm thinking to myself, oh no. Orby's coming. I'm starting to freak. I got two joints in my mouth and three in my ears. I'm thinking, Orby's coming, man. What am I going to do? I mean, a manager of rent a cloud is coming. I don't, she hears from God. I, don't, I, don't, I was getting like, oh, no. She, she, she could just show up. Whew, hi, whoa. Right? Maybe she can stick her head through the, like, through the door. Hi, I'm Orby. These are Christians. So I'm like, oh, no. I was starting to freak. And all of a sudden, there was a knock on the door. Right? I'm, I thought to myself, oh, no. So I, I looked through the little peephole, and there was a little lady with a piano in her mouth. I'm thinking, let me just wait. Let's see if she'll walk through that door. <laughs> Jesus person. Mark, I know you're there. God told me. Oh, my goodness. I can't get away for this lady to save my life. So I open the door. She says, hi, Mark. I said, hi, Orby. Nice to meet you. Come on, man. Take a, take a load off the floor. And she says, you know, she says, Mark, I can't stay. I thought, oh, that's too bad. <laughs> and she says, God just wanted me to come see you, tell you he loves you. And she hands me a check I already made out for $175. Tell me God knows how to get your attention. I guess with me it was with money. She says, here. I said, I can't take that. She says, you must. God said, I don't send it back. I said, I can't take it. She says, you must. I says, I can't. She says, you can. I said, thank you. And, uh, and then she left. And I'm thinking to myself, God told me. That's all I could hear. God told me. So when I got this, I got the cat thing happening. And a week later, I got $175. God told me. <laughs> Here, number 10, this is Orby. God bless Orby. I tell you, he was a sweetheart. She was just sort of there in my life. God just sort of put her there in my life right at that time. You think that God doesn't care about you. You think that God can't find you. You think that you can hide. You cannot. He loves you. He doesn't give up. He's not like man. He don't give up on you. The blood... He didn't die to give us a career. The blood is there every day, just as fresh as it's ever been. Right. You can, he'll forgive you any day you say yes and then change and then move away from what you were doing. You can't say our father and live like an orphan. You can't pray cream and live skim milk. You can't curse the devil openly and serve him in secret. Sooner or later, Christians got to say, I will serve him exclusively. Be a Christian wimp your whole life. I don't know if God's really speaking to me. He does speak to you. He loves you. He will speak to you. You've got to position yourself to hear. God. Orby called me. About a week later on the phone. Ring, ring. Hello. She says, Mark? I said, yeah. She said, this is Orby. I thought, hi, Orby. She says, God spoke to me today. Really? How much? <laughs> she says, no, no, it's nothing like that. Well, call him back. <laughs> she, he says, 
God's going to send people in your path in a week or two that are going to take you and show you to the church I have called you to go to. That's it. That's all. And she hung up. What's with that? God's going to send me God, run me down, God, and God. I didn't get it. I don't know. How's that going to happen? The coolest thing happened October 31st, Halloween. That is an evil time. I did things for Reader's Digest on exposing rock music, toys, and TV, and also Halloween. I did that for many years, and I toured and did that, especially in South Africa. And uh, on this evil night of the year, October 31st, 1978, and it is. I don't have time to get into it, but, you know, I'm just telling you, uh, it's, don't take it lightly, right? What witches and Satanists take seriously, you better listen to. Wicca, we don't want to talk about all that. Well, they're around, man. Wicca's all over the place. I'm not afraid of them. We're going to do this to you. We're going to do that to you. I remember witches came to our service once. They're on a front row pulling their hairs out and, and frying them with a lighter. <laughs> right in front of my eye. Well, I said, hey, man, you're going to be bald by the time you get done, man. <laughs> and you think you're cursing me. I'm not afraid of that stuff. What, are you kidding? And they got all mad. You know what? They get all mad and they start cursing. Oh, and they rush out. And I had a, a new Suburban that I'd, I'd gotten, and they keyed it, and they flattened the tires, just like people who say they have power. Come on, float that sucker in the air. Let me see some power. You know, <laughs> get out there and come and wreck my vehicle and think, wow, I got them. No, <laughs> no, you didn't. It's all right. We can get new tires and get the scratch fixed on the triple paint job. No problem. <laughs> mm. Halloween. Betty and Phil Marley are home, minding their own business. Halloween night, about 8 o'clock, Betty says, Hey, Phil, let's go to Valley View Mall. That's in near Dallas, Farmer's Branch, Texas. Look at the Valley View Mall, and let's just walk around the mall. Well, I was closing that night. So I had Dracula teeth in, and, you know, it was, a, it was, it was about 200 stores, 250 stores in this mall. So Dracula would walk by every once in a while, and Frankenstein, and ghosts and ghouls, and all sorts of things would walk by. And in walk... Betty and Phil, and I'm sitting in front, assistant manager, these <laughs> teeth. I said, welcome to Richmond's. And they looked at me, and she says, oh, where's the pants and stuff like that? I said, all the way in the back. So they walk all the way back, show them the pants, and they walk out the door. As they're walking out the door, Betty turns around, and she looks at me. She says, what's your name? I said, my name's Mark. She says, Mark, do you know Jesus? I said, do you know Orby? <laughs> Here we go. I said, do you know Jesus? She says, I said, I'm a Catholic. She said, answer the question. Oh, I wanted a Decker. <laughs> Boom. Why? I, I just told you, I'm a Catholic. She says, answer the question. Do you know Jesus is your Lord and Savior? I said, I, I don't know. I, I guess I do. Of course, I didn't. I was as lost as a white goose in the whitest snowstorm. I knew you know when you don't know them. We're not going to fake it. I know. No, you don't. You'll know it because you'll be serving them. You'll be talking about them. You'll put stickers on stuff. I love Jesus. Okay. <laughs> These were the people that told me about the church on that night. And she says, you know, Mark, here's a track. And she gave me the book of John, a sinner's prayer in front. And she gave it to me. She says, we go to Word of Faith World Outreach Center, Pastor Bob and Marty Tilton. I just talked to Pastor Tilton uh, a couple months ago. And, uh, man, that man was electric. I mean, the ministry and during those years, wow. And it, it blessed me. And, but I remember, she, I said, great, No problem. I'll be there like never. <laughs> and I said, thank you. Get out of here, Jesus people. Well, about a week later, I went back and uh, I went and sit on the toilet. Let me tell you something. When you sit on a toilet, I got to have something I must read. No read, no go. I mean, it's so bad, I got to read a comet can. Oh, I didn't know comet had this. 
I mean, you know how God can get you. And usually I would have magazines. I would, and all the magazines were gone. The tailor had taken all the magazines out. And I'm sitting on the john, sitting right there. I got nothing to read. And I, got my, I, I wore my suit coat in there, and I thought, which I never do. And I thought, well, I'll get the bulletin from the business, see what's going on. So I go in there and pull it out, and I pull out this track, this little book. I thought, oh, no. <laughs> the book of John. Now, here I am on a John reading the book of John. I didn't know what to do. Let's put number 12 up. I'll skip a little bit. And I remember I got to this right here. A suggested prayer. It started with John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was God. Okay. In the beginning was the Word. And He. You know the scripture I'm talking about? And when I read that, and he made. And now when I read, he, Jesus appears to me in this little bathroom. I wasn't on drugs. And if I was, you go sober instantly in his presence. I'll never forget the blue lights. i never seen a blue like that. I have four lava lamps on my big set, and that blue reminded me of that moment. And Jesus appears to me. I remember that when I saw him, not that I saw absolute details of every feature, but I knew that when he appeared and when he spoke, it was better than any sound system I ever heard. He spoke in me through me, around me, when he spoke, he says, Mark, I love you. This is Jesus. He said, Lord, he says, I've called you to preach the gospel. I said, Lord, I don't don't know, Lord, he says, I've given you a ministry to preach and to play the drums and you will do it for me all over the world. I said, Lord, I'm just not good enough, Lord. How could I do this for you? He says, you'll do it because I've called you. My hand is on you. I said, Lord, I will never forget that moment, the power of God, the anointing of God, even when I talk about it. You just sense the glory of God. And I remember how it opened up and how he was right there in front of me, confined to this little room in a vision it seemed, but real. But yet, it could have been as big as he wanted to make himself or whatever. It was just mind-boggling. And I turned and put number 12 back up for me. And I prayed this prayer. It's suggested, but I prayed this prayer. <laughs> Right, Dear Lord and Savior, I know that I have sinned against you and that I am not living within your plan. For this I ask forgiveness. I believe that you died for me and in doing so paid the penalty for my sin. I know I am willing to turn from sin and now I ask you to come into my heart and life as personal Savior. Help me now to follow and obey you as Lord and to find your perfect will for my life. And I signed that on the 6th day of November, 1978. I, Mark Temperato, claim God's promises and accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I tell you, something happened to me on that toilet. All things passed away, brother. I became a new creature in Christ.
I didn't have the vaguest idea even what was going on. All I know, I had something happen inside of me, on me, through me. And I said, now I know why I play the drums. Now I know why he made me fast. Now I know why I play ours. Because I am a musician sent to earth to make sure that there is people worshiping him. And every one of you that worship here, you have taken Lucifer's job. And he doesn't like it. We worship him because he's worthy. So, I went to this church myself. I said, I'm going to go. So I went there, three pink, pink suit, stoned, <laughs> joint behind my ear. I just got a, I don't know how much it was, probably half a pound of tie stick in. And uh, anybody using tie stick? Ah, I got you. Anyways. <laughs> I think to myself, I go into this church, man. I don't know what's going on. You know, I, 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 I come in to this church. I walk in. It's like a circus. It's like people are happy. People are dancing. People aren't going, God bless you. People are all loud. Not ashamed. I walked in to go, I like this. Right? I didn't know. I walked in there, man. People were doing the charismatic can-can. I didn't have the vaguest idea what it was. So I looked, and the band was cooking. There was a lady on the piano named Rhonda, I believe. Or she, I don't know what service. We had two services, but I would marry her a year later. about. And uh, anyways, it wasn't happening at that time, but I do remember I saw that they had drums, but there were no drummer there. There were two drummers, and they got it mixed up for whatever the reason, so they had no drummer, and they had about eight or nine, ten-piece band. Uh, Dr. Bill Kaiser was lead music, let me tell you. His wife could play the zither. Loved it. They were just blessing, Imogene. And... And I went out, I saw all these people. I went out to my car, took a hit of something, got some drumsticks, and I walked in the door. As soon as I walked in the door, whatever high was happening, it was gone. I mean, gone. And I just walked right down, right up on stage, and just started playing on the drums. Pastor Bob and Marty Tilton looked over and says, who in the world is that? (laughs) Bill Kaiser's like, Now, I don't think they ever heard a jazz rock beat the bless the Lord on my soul before, (laughs) right? Because I take a worship song and pull it quickly. Listen, worship is not slow and praise is not fast. It can be the other way around. It's a mad, worship is about who he is. He's worthy. There is no, I play a song I like. No. Play my favorite song and I'll worship him. No. No, you won't. You worship him because you recognize that he is God. That's why. If I just had the right song, well, sometimes there are certain songs that pull us in. We know that. But that's not what we depend on. We don't depend on that. So I, I, I didn't, I'm thinking to myself, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And all, now if I would be playing this, this is where I took it. And they thought, what in the world is going on? I'm thinking to myself, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. I'm thinking to myself, hmm. About the next time around, I took it right to this. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And I don't think they'd ever heard a rock beat to bless the Lord on my soul. 
And I started whacking cymbals and hitting things and the, and the song. And no one disrupted, no one interrupted me. I was playing along. I played the, the whole rest of the song service. And then, but after that, when I started hitting, par God fell. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what was going on. And people just started to stream up. I didn't stream up, maybe eight people. People just started to come up and say, I've had back pain for 40 years, Pastor. It's bad pain. I could barely walk. He says, but when that guy started hitting those cymbals and playing those drums, God instantly healed me. Another guy came up. I had 104 temperature. I had felt lousy, the biggest migraine. But when he started playing the cymbals and the drums, God healed me. He says, you're anointed. I said, I'm a what? <laughs> Would you call me, man? I didn't know all this terminology. I'm anointed. Well, yeah, well, you're a... And I'm thinking to myself, I'm a what? And I, you know, I, I didn't know. I, 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 was, I, got, you know, I was out there, and something happened that day. People began to testify. And that's where God birthed the drums. That's why I built the set. No matter where I play as the Lord leads. I, I'm not bragging about it. I'm just saying what happens. Uh, people get healed. We've had blind people just begin to scream. You don't have to do how many fingers you got. Let me tell you something about a blind person. <laughs> when a blind person sees, they don't go, oh, yeah. Yeah, I can. They go nuts. When a deaf person, they used to scream, I'm playing, you know, I'm thinking to myself, boy, I wish these people be quiet, they're wrecking my soul. <laughs> you know. And what happened is God had opened their ears. God would open their eyes. I, I don't even understand how the, some of that stuff would happen. We see miracles happen. I mean to tell you. You want to see something beautiful. You just play a drum solo under the Holy Ghost for a bunch of orphans. And you watch the love of God just sh shed on their heart. And you watch them just sort of feel loved. I tell you, there's nothing like it. And all of us were orphans. It's only because of Christ that all of us, we're all equal, man. We're all the same. All of us. The shed blood of Jesus Christ and Him alone. So I, I, I didn't know what was going on. All I know is that and something else happened during the service. I never experienced this before. I, after I came down and people were saying all this thing, past, Pastor Bob would look at me like, who is this guy? Where did he come? And they're all like, I don't know, I'm drumming. And I sat down, I went down and stood next to this little Mexican lady. She had, she, she had that piano look too. She was like, hi. I thought, hey, what's happening there? And she's a nice lady. I asked her, you got a taco in your pocket? Man, I'm hungry. And, she, and uh, later she did. I actually got... Anyways, she, I found out that they, they were going to take care of me. It was really cool. And there was just some cool people. And, and all of a sudden, I remember Bill Kaiser would lead a little bit further. And then the, the, some hush happened. I didn't know what it was. I was like, what in the world is that? It's like a hush, like a blanket, like a move, like a wind would just come over. I didn't understand. And it was really quiet. And all of a sudden, this little Mexican lady took off. I thought, you all right, lady? <laughs> like a Mexican terrorist. You all right, man? We need to put this fire out. You okay, man? And she ended it. Yeah, I'm thinking to myself, I hope you feel better. Then all of a sudden, Bill Kaiser, thus says the Lord, I will blah, 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 blah. And it was beautiful. I'm thinking to myself, this is crazy. Right? I, I never seen this. But I liked it. There was, there was something that like clicked. I like this, man. No passing toe tags out of the door here. Ooh. Mm. Well, I went back. I was still puffing and praising. No one told me it was wrong, right? I said, hey. I was out there puffing and praising. Praise the Lord. <laughs> 
Go to seven. Yeah. Although I wasn't speaking in tongues yet. This is what happened. <laughs> Betty and Phil came over to me. I must have been two weeks later. Asked me to come over to lunch. I said, yeah, I'm not an idiot. Absolutely. I'll come over. Okay. A guy named Tom Lund was there. I want to deck this dude. He was like, I had this cheesecake with the strawberries on it. I was almost there. I was getting ready, and the dude looked at me and says, Mark. Yeah, what's up, man? He says, are you filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongue? I said, am I filled with the who? The speaking in what? He says, you need, I didn't really understand. No one had really spoke to me about it. I said, I didn't know what you're talking about. I said, you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues. Who says? He says, you need to be filled right now. I said, listen, man, I just want my cheesecake. He said, leave me alone. Just let me get my cheesecake. And this guy kept, kept on me, backing me. Like, like, no meant no. Closer meant death. Right? But he just kept pushing me back. And finally, he's got me against the wall. He says, he says Mark, Right now, you can be filled with the Holy Ghost and with evidence speaking in tongues. Cheesecake, man. All I want is eat my cheesecake. <laughs> Betty and Phil are over there at the table. What am I going to be sure about? What the world are they doing? I said, I said, man, I, I want to eat that cheesecake. He says, right now, Father, these guys that's praying for me. Lord, I thank you right now. I pray for his brain. And I said, hey, man, there ain't nothing wrong with my brain. He says, I pray that you'd heal all the brain cells from all the drugs, that you would do this and you would do that. I'm thinking to myself, I need to get the cheesecake and get out of here, man. Just let me out of here. Just let me out. And all of a sudden, this hand, like a suction cup from hell, I thought, was on my head <laughs> without my permission. <laughs> I'm against the wall. He's saying now, you will be filled right now with the Holy Ghost with the evidence speaking in tongues. Father, I thank for the Holy Ghost to come upon Mark now. I, mean, just, I said, listen, man, it's not, uh, uh, look, it ain't talking. Uh, nothing, nothing. My tongue don't speak. You get it? He says, right now, Lord, I thank you right now in Jesus' name. I'm thinking to myself, cheesecake, bro. Cheesecake. I said, right now, he starts speaking in tongues. Then he began to command in the name of Jesus. And all of a sudden, my tongue, which I've known my whole life, All of a sudden, there was like, <laughs> started coming up. I'm thinking to myself, no, down, boy. Down. <laughs> no. <laughs> down, boy. <laughs> and he's thinking, oh, right now, in Jesus' name. And all of a sudden, I said, oh, the heck with it. <laughs> and I just come up. He says, that's it. I said, oh, I began to pray. I began to pray. I want your cheesecake? No. I got in my car. I went home, driving all the way home. I mean, I didn't shut up. Someone pulled out in front of me. Hey, Lord, I'm a master. I get home. I walk in the apartment. I walk into a cloud from hell. I mean, an army would get stoned walking to my apartment. I had like six or seven friends in there, and they were like, I walked into a cloud. Boof. I thought, hey, guys. Something just happened to me. Did I say that? No, I didn't see anything. I walked in that place praying in tongues. I just walked. They said, what's wrong with you? They said, what's going on? What's wrong with you, man? I'm so I, I went upstairs I began to take the coke I began to take the marijuana I began to take the tie stick and everything else that I had sitting in my little merezhny my six foot 
bongs and my, my Mirashan pipes and all the records uh, that I used to play <laughs> to some of them and rockets and things that are rubbish and all of a sudden I began to get all that thing and put it in the toilet and all my friends were coming in they say what in the world are you doing I'm just throwing this stuff in the toilet and God loosed me for a moment I said I was saved in the toilet old things passed away wow I just fucked it I tell you, I lost a hundred friends overnight. Let me tell you, you can't lose nothing you never had, man. Christians, you got a friend, they'll stick with you. If they're not your friend, they won't. Great wisdom, huh? I tell you, I didn't know what was going on. Stand, if you don't stand for Jesus, you'll fall for anything. I was out looking for the high, and all of a sudden I found that the most high was now living inside of me. I'm thinking, oh, I like this. Whew, I like it. Jesus, I don't know, people can be walking down in the middle of the night. you never seen people walk down to barefoot and smack their leg and go, ah, Buddha, never. Never. Krishna, no. Shiva, no. Why is it when people whack themselves, they always go, oh, Jesus Christ. Why does Jesus get that pull? Why is that? Name that's above every other name? My father, I share some personal thing with the family. He was, you know, before they got saved, I remember, and I just got saved and came home, and I was preaching to everything. I was like a machine gun waiting to happen, you know. And uh, Dad, I tell you how cursing gets in people, right? I'm sitting there, we were sitting there, I said, Mom said she had a voice, my mother had a voice like this. You know, I, Ryan and I, we actually took care of them about the last six years, worst years of life, really. And I did both their um, launching pad services in the church. We had their bodies in a coffin. My boys and I, we would come down and play, see if God would bring them back. We believe in raising the dead, you know. Right? I'm a fireman. We got any firemen in here? Any firemen? God bless you. I'm a fireman. I'm a chaplain of the fire department. You know, they're great people there. Love those guys there. But I also let them know, man, if someone's dead down the side of the road and the professionals aren't there, let me in. I want to raise people from the dead. And they're like, what? No, that's why you got coroners and you got the system. No, let's get them before they get here. Get them back. They say he's dead. Yeah, well, they got to be dead before they come back. You know, Christian, you can't be 99.9% .9 dead and have the resurrection you've been looking for. You've got to die, man. Right? The man has wisdom who gives up what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Jesus, something about the name. I remember Dad was sitting there and Mom would say, You pray, son. Okay, Ma. I'll pray. I began to pray, and the dad would go, say something, he says, oh, and he swore, he said, oh, God damn it, Rick. And I said, Dad, don't, he said, oh, Jesus Christ, I'm sorry, son. <laughs> Just like that. Now, I'm thinking to myself, this, this is the world, folks. This is my mom and dad. Do you know that from that time, 1980, 81, my parents came down. In 1999, I received Christ in their 80s as a Lord and Savior. I saw it right there in one of our meetings. My mom and dad. We grew up in an Italian family. We live with all sorts of yelling and things like that, and things that happen. I'm just, who understands what I'm talking about? They just don't see it, bless her. I think we judge people way too fast. Love on them. Let God change them. And they swear. Why is that swearing? God damn it. God doesn't damn. People damn themselves. God isn't a dammer, he's a lover. You know, there is judgment. <laughs> hey, that's later. Well, anyways, I stayed at the church about four years. Do you know the pastor Tilton? I, I told this to him, he said, Mark, I didn't remember doing that. He gave me a key to the building. He gave me a key to the building. He said, anytime you want to go in. I, he says, you're the drummer here now. The other two drummers st st stood down. He said, there's something about you. You're the drummer here now. So I had to be at every service, you see. I needed responsibility. I had to be there. 
musicians, musos, recognize worship leaders cause splits. Lucifer was the head worship leader, and he took one third of the heavenly angels with him. So that's why we must be diligent to keep ourselves humble before God. Because I tell you right now, I know this. If you don't humble yourself, you will learn humility through humiliation. You humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, and he will lift you up. I tell you, folks, he's looking. He's, he's, he's waiting. If I stayed there. I speak it in tongues all the time. I mean all the time. You should, how many of you are baptized in the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues? Right? People say, oh, that's of the devil. I worked for the devil 22 years. I never spoke in tongues. <laughs> no way. I just don't believe it. You're lost. It gives you power. It gives you strength. When you don't know how to talk and you don't know how to pray and you're sort of frustrated at wit's ends, he gives you the ability by the precious Holy Ghost to speak mysteries beyond this world and beyond the devil's ears right into God's own throne room. We don't know. People say, I know, because you don't know. Because the, the Bible says it's an unknown tongue, Mr. Known. It's unknown. You don't know. This is not like interpretation. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the gift. Two kinds of tongues. The gift within the church that operates within the church under the authority of the leaders as the Spirit leads. Yea, thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord under God's unction. Then you have your personal tongue. It's as you will. The other is as the Spirit wills. I just threw that in there. Of course, you probably know that, but I always like to talk about that because I don't hear that too much. People say, well, it's just a gift in Corinthians. Yeah, they're all a gift, man. They're all a charisma. But one goes straight to heaven, unknown. The other lays out a minefield of unimaginable strategies of God. Oh, man. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So what happened, I met Rhonda, the pianist, and then uh, we were married. You can throw number 11 on. We'll go back to 11. And uh, my sweetie, I've been married since uh, October 6, 1979. And hallelujah. That's Phil and Betty on the right. Okay? And then mom and dad, uh, Ronnie's mom has gone to be with the Lord. And Ronnie was just in Texas uh, with her dad, taking care of him. You know, everyone gets a little bit older, right? We all are. It's okay. I'll be 57 in August. Probably go on and buy me some steak sauce. It's the number. And uh, <laughs> I think to myself, August 13th, and that's why I made the new world record, 813, 813 pieces. And we'll share that a little bit as time goes on. So I became the manager, number 13, Richmond's. They promoted me. I stayed there. I was faithful. I worked 70, 80 hours a week at times, sometimes less. I had 23 people working. I learned business. I learned all sorts of things. The man who hired me to begin with was a Christian, Mr. Snyder. I'll never forget. I, I wasn't even dressing. I wasn't dressing too good at all. He says to me, you know, I'm a Christian. God wants you to work here. I said, here we go. Okay. We'll do that. So it began to move on. So from there on, I give you a little story of the drums. As a matter of fact, I'll do that a little bit later. I'm going to show you something later on the drums. I'll just skip over that so you get to see that. But I'll just show you the number 23. If you get the 2013 Guinness Book World Record, that is on page 102. Do you know what kind of favor God gave us? What kind of favor? They came out from London, Guinness. I've been talking to them for a year. They wouldn't even look at anything I sent them. They're busy. And so I did the whole evidence pack. I did it. I sent it into them. Matter of fact, the, the criteria for the world record, I don't know if I have that in here. I might not have put it in this one. I don't think I did. Mm, let's 
see. I'm not sure if I put that in for you to see that. The world record. Uh, throw in 33, would you please? What I did, I had to stick to their guidelines. So to stick to their guidelines, I told them, your, your record since 1994 was 308 pieces. I said, I just built a drum set now over 600 pieces. But you see, anybody can put drums all around and make it a world record. Maybe the record is sat from 94, sir, but I respectfully say, he said, well, we have experts, sir. I said, I'm an expert, and I play for God, and I'm his drummer, and I'm telling you, sir, respectfully, I believe a drummer should not be able to run around. And the record was that a man run around. It was very cool. I mean, he's got my vote, right? They ran around the room playing the drums. I said, I think a drummer should be able to sit on his chair, and whatever he hits from that throne reaching should be the world record. And uh, so I sent him this picture. I said, I just blew away your world record. I said, I think anybody could do that if they really want to do that, sir. I think my set in the middle should be the world record. And when I sent them this, they were like... And then they had a film. They sent, and, I, and, I, and then they said, listen to this. Then they said to me, we have just disqualified the old record, doctor. We've changed the guidelines, and we've taken all your advice on guidelines. Now a drummer must sit on the chair or stand, and whatever he reaches within that will be the world record. All right. Here I got three people show up from London, Guinness. They walk in the door. The drum set's 100 feet away, and they go like this. Wow. When Guinness World Record says, wow, you now have a platform to minister Christ all over the world. Billion people see Jesus, the sole solution, on my bass drum. I've been talking to Michael Jackson's drummer, drummer Jonathan Moffat. Guys, are, I'm on the internet, Facebooking. Talking, famous guys, they don't know what to do with me. But I can talk about Christ, and I don't pull any punches. I'm not ashamed. They don't know what to do with me because they can't get rid of me. No, they can shoot me and kill me or whatever the devil wants to do. Promote me. Be my guest. But the fact of the matter is, we don't leave here till our time's up. Right? Amen. We're almost through here. Another 10, day, 10 hours. We'll be done. Twenty-four, eight. You saw the three forty. I'll just show you this one. Number twenty-four. This is a new world record I set next week. Last week, I just got it. Here it is. We just received it last week, and I shattered the three hundred and forty. It was unprecedented in history. The closest drum set was like hundred pieces. We set one at three forty, and the spirit of God just moved on me to absolutely shatter the record in a, in a way that only God could have done it. And I'm bragging on him. I'm bragging on me. And so we set it at 813 pieces. We just received this from 340 to 813. And it says, in order to relieve our child care. It, <laughs> I just shared that. We will talk about more as we go. The testimony. Well, God called me. I remember I was down in the service and God spoke to me, go to South, I know God spoke to me, go to South Africa. I remember uh, David Ornelas called me from Rama. him and Tom Ingalls. They had a Rama band out there and they said they heard Hilton Sutton was over in South Africa talking about my drum set that he's seen at Bob Tilton's. He said it was like a satellite and even that was, it was like a small kit. I mean, this was the kit in, in uh, Pastor Bob's church in 1978. Uh, let's do I have that here. Comparison shot, inside shot, kids and set, scorpion. Hmm. Hey, scorpion, yeah. Fifteen. That's the set I had then in 78, playing at the church there. I bought these drums from Stephen Blad of the Jay Giles Band. And uh, that's, there it was. I mean, I sent this picture to Pastor Bob, and he just said, man, I remember that camera. I still have it. 
you know. But that's where it was. That's what Hilton liked, right? So they called me. They said, you want me to come over and do their new, new album there with Rayma? I said, well, you know, I don't know. I mean, I I'll do that. I just got back. I was with Bernard Johnson. Um, he, man, he's an uh, African-American sax player, man. I mean, Bernard. He, God healed him of asthma, and he holds a 30-second note on his sax as a testimony. Just outstanding. So I went with the doctor, and we went to New York, and we did a big concert there in this huge hall. And then when I came back and walked in, I got this phone call from South Africa. And I was, I was praying. God spoke to me. He says, I've called you to go to Cape Town, South Africa. I began to weep like a baby. I called Rhonda. I couldn't stop crying. I said, Rhonda, I know God has just spoken to me. And I'm not going anywhere. I'm just for the fun of it. And she says, you know, I'd always know we'd be in, I'd be a missionary in Africa. Boom, that was it. We're the kind. They had eight suitcases with two phone numbers, one of them gone bad, and we land in the airport. We're those people. He says, go. We just went. We started preaching. That's another story. I'll tell you that. Another time, man, my first preaching engagement. A huge church. Oh, guys from America. Oh, and I went there, and he says, uh, share your testimony. I said, sir, I don't know if you want my testimony. No, you must share it. I said, well, I got saved on a toilet. Jesus appeared to me. <laughs> he says, you can't get saved on a toilet. Jesus doesn't go inside bathrooms. He did mine. You're not saved, son. Oh, yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. He canceled all the rest of the meetings. 400 people came to the Lord that night. God touched people. He called midnight, the pastor I was staying with, he says, Pastor John Henderson, he says, what a, oh, this guy saved my life. He, he woke me up, he says, ah, this pastor just called and canceled all the rest of your meetings, something about being saved on a toilet. He says, I tell you what, you can preach for me as much as you want. Thank God, little PPC pastor in Plumstead took me under his wing and just let me preach. Hallelujah. Tell me God doesn't know who you are. Oh, I got a picture of mom and dad being saved. 30. Thank you, mom and dad. Yeah, number 30, 3 oh. There's mom. Dad's the white hair. And, my, and the mom's right next. Oh, and there's my, there's, oh my goodness. You got Aunt Vic, which is Mom's brother's wife, Phil, Aunt Vic's son, Lisa next to him, Phil's daughter, all got saved that night. We had more relatives come to meetings. You never know who gets saved. We can't save anybody, man. But it's good to see people respond, right? I just thought I'd encourage you. Your mom and dad, it's okay, right? Keep praying for everybody. It's all right. He'll make a way where there seems to be no way. I put a scorpion on, 39. I took a little rubber scorpion. I custom painted. I custom painted a lot of things on my set. And I put a scorpion on there where it freaks people out in the skull. I make it very clear. But don't forget, God has given us power over serpents and scorpions. And nothing, Bashali, means hurt you. There's a lot of things on my set. There's a hundred different emblems, not pieces, on my set. That goes strictly. My set is nothing but a. It's a trap waiting to happen. <laughs> Talking about. I got six bass drums on my set, but there's only one they really see. And they say, Why well, you only have one bass drum? You should have ten. I'm glad you said that. I do that because there's only one God and there's only one way to heaven, Jesus Christ. My set is all trapped like that in a good way. When they ask me questions, it moves right into the gospel. Because without that, set is worthless. Without the power of God and the love of God, ooh, I just got to love it. Number 40. Jonathan. Oh, there it is. I'll leave that one. I might have that wrong. There is the 1994. I was couldn't, trying to find it. That's the world record in 94. And I thought it had my vote, right? And that's Chad Smith uh, running around there with the, the helmet on fire. And I thought it was pretty cool, but 1994 to 2011, let's change that record. So we did. We just asked God to blew it right out of the water. Then we blew that out of the water. We did that and blew it right off the earth and put it right up in heaven's glory. So now they're going, what in the world is going on? Now I can talk about Jesus. Now they listen more. That's the point, you see. Talk about the lantern not preaching down their throat. 
I'm talking being a light in a dark place. Being a salt thrown into their stream. Right? That's who you are. Rubbing shoulders with the world. The Bible says, go in all the world. That word world is cosmos. It means to go into the seat of their enjoyment. Now, when you go into the seat of their enjoyment, you'll be preaching the word. Now, if you go to bars and strip places and adult clubs and you go in there eyeballing everything, you're not talking about Christ, you're backslid. When Jesus was hanging around the sinners, they didn't dominate the conversation. He did. Who he was. Right? That's, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about blending in. I'm not talking about seeker sensitive. Oh my God, gag me with a rake. I'm not talking about seeker targeted. I'm talking about letting God move and when he's done, he's done. One day I felt God speak to me, who do you think you are and who does everybody think they are and tell me that I will only move an hour and a half or two hours on a Sunday. Who do people think they are telling me that? What if I want to go six hours on that Sunday? What if I want, well, we get tired. But what if I want, what if the Holy Spirit wants to move? Who made that rule that God only moves during that little time period? You really need to think about this. You want revival. This isn't about time element. Now, we all love to get home and eat and sleep and get up. We, I like that too. But man, while the sun is shining, get the fork in the hay. <laughs> right? Do it. Move forward. No matter what. Mm. Number 35 is a casual shot I put up just to show you. All the glory goes to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I have two eagles, golden eagles at the back with flags coming out the back. My set is from hands with nails going through it. I've customized to all the... My set is built to witness. 150 dB Amtrak train horns on the front that I trigger with an air switch inside. Ephesians 5.14. I can play something here just to let you know how I mean business. Wake up, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. You hear it? Wake up! You hear it? I can't hear you. You gotta hear it. Wake up, O sleeper. Yeah, we tell them, we, we, we had to change about 135 dB. We tell them to put their hands over their ears, so it's, it's okay. Blood doesn't come out of their eyes for long. It's okay. <laughs> we'll do something another time. Let me skip through this here. I got a few more pictures, but that's okay. I think you get the, you understand what we make. Number 38, um, David on the left and Marky in the middle. Mark, he's no longer a Marky. And we were just joking around, having a good time, and you know, we just love the Lord, and we, and we just, and, and uh, we're, we all, we're all growing. All of us are growing, right? I'm still growing. I want to turn to your neighbor and say, I'm still growing. I'm still learning. <laughs> Drummers, and there's 26 rudiments, like 386,000 possible combinations. See, when I drum, I don't drum, I didn't build my big drum set to play it to music. I built it to make music with. There's a difference. So when I play, I don't play all the drummer's new riffs. I'm not into that. I let my boys do that. I play what comes out of my spirit. That way I don't have to be a slave to a Luciferian system or a beat that I don't believe carries any anointing. Okay. I don't want to do all the new tricks. My boys can do that. Great. But for me, I think it differently when I worship. And so that's what happened. And so what I do is I worship God on the set. Many times, if the Lord leads, we might break out prophetically. And I say pathetically? No, prophetic. Everyone. Everyone stand up for a second. We won't be that much longer. Stand up, stretch, and then sit back down again. And I'm going to minister. I'm going to play on the drums. Thank you, Lord. How many are ready for this? Let me tell you what's going to happen. Nothing that I can produce. You can be seated. Thank you.
when I play, I, I can't demand this, and I, I can't, I, what I do is I play in faith, and somewhere I break from the flesh and the spirit, and things begin to happen. You will be healed of something or touched if you're hungry. It will move. It's a little bit different. But just relax and keep your eye on the Lord. I remember I was doing a revival at the Pastor Rodney Howard Brown, uh, Dr. Rodney, when I was uh, in Maltino back in 1983. I remember that Mrs. Brown was there, and she was deaf in one ear. I said, Mrs. Brown, come here and put your head in my bass drum. Let me tell you something about Mrs. Brown. She's 80-something now. She didn't hesitate. Everyone say she didn't hesitate. hesitate. Want to be healed? Don't hesitate. She just got up from her chair. She got down on her knee. She put her head in the bass drum, and I hit it. And God opened her ear. Miraculous. God did it. I don't understand it, but I know it happens. You say, well, I don't really understand that. Join the crowd. But that's not the point. I've seen the dead race twice. I don't know how that happens either. I don't get it, but it happens. I pray for a lot of them. They stay dead. And the ones you don't think, they come back. It just goes to show you, it really, not us. I used to preach at uh, Abe and Lillian Defense Church in Johannesburg, her, the granddaughter of Smith Wigglesworth. And they used to tell me about the things that Smith used to do. Oh, my, I tell you, unbelievable. And God would touch people. So when I play, I'm really playing for the Lord. I, I, you know, I play for the audience of one. You'll have to forgive me. I'm not really here to play drums for you. But I, I just play for the Lord, and uh, you get the overflow. If there is some on it. I want to worship him. And uh, I love y'all. I'm glad you're here. And I'm, I know it's getting a little bit later. But uh, nonetheless, I was built for this. To worship my creator. Say, so what's he going to do? I don't know. I don't plan stuff. I believe the Bible talks about to play skillfully before the Lord. That word skillful is a lot more than just rudimentary expertise. The word there, like sila. When you talk about it, and I've, I've, I teach a lot of things, and i got a lot of things bubbling in my heart on this subject. No doubt, music and musicians. To play skillful, and if you read it and study it, it means to interpret the mood of the Spirit. Lucifer and his kingdom has already got expertise in timing down to an absolute billion-dollar industry. That's not our industry. Okay, whatever they're doing, I'm not in I want to do what God wants me to do. I love them, and God, I'll go to them and play, whatever. And watch. Imagine the first time I'll get to play for a worldly crowd. Can you imagine the power of God sweeping through a stadium? Just musicians being touched. We've, had, we've seen things like that happen. I don't even understand it. But I know it happens. And God gets the glory because it's my mouth. He gets the glory. People go, well, who do you think you are? I'm that guy. I don't think I am anybody. I know who I am. I am his. He is mine. And I love him. And with that, I will worship him. And that I'm going to do. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord. Praise your mighty name, O Lord, King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. For you are worthy, O God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to stick using this one if I can. Lord, can you give me a little more power in the monitor if you could? Praise your mighty name. I know it seems intermittent, but it'll be all right. Thank you, Father. There's only one that's worthy to be praised. The king of, don't keep me to time. I'll wreck it soon. Love, that's one thing. Don't hold me to time because I am like the wind. I don't do time anymore. I've been, I've been delivered from cover songs. I loved them. I did it for a living for 15, 20 years. You know what I mean? Playing to a beat, playing to a metronome, but I am free now. Thank you, Lord. So I can just, as the Holy Spirit moves me from slow to fast to super fast to disappearing, I'm into the Houdini thing like that. God, just do whatever you do. Don't let me be stuck in a place. I want to be moving. 
King of kings and Lord of lords, worthy to be praised. King of kings and Lord of lords, worthy to be praised. King of kings, Lord of lords, worthy to be praised. King of kings, King of kings, he's the King of kings. Worthy, oh God. Sick of
are worthy, O oh Lord. Only you, you are our healer. Only you, only you are worthy to be praised. Only you are worthy to be praised. Only you. Kandi <laughs> My child, fear not, my love, I will never leave you or forsake you. My love, my child, know that I love you. And whom I love, and whom I love, and who the sun free, who the sun sets free, is free indeed.
Part of my army, O oh Lord. Come out of the barracks. No, you got to run to the battle. Don't run from the battle. Run to the battle. And there is none other but you, for you are king.
high sounding cymbal. Loud sounding cymbal. Have oil in your lamp, you can buy it. You can't sell it. You can't know that he is who he is until you make your mind up. Don't you know? happy with just getting by. Know that God has an army that does not lack anything but lack. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh.
God, let the Spirit of God begin to make a way where there seems to be no way. Let the Spirit of God begin to make a way in your life. You say, you know, Mark, I don't know what there is anymore in my life to make that kind of a way. He will make the way. I know you're all tired. I'm tired. But it's not about being tired. Maybe you're just tired of being sick and tired. Maybe you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. That's why you just got to know... When I begin to think what God has done in my life, maybe even in your life, how many sense in the presence of God right now? How many came in with pain in your body and the pain's gone? Leave it up. How many of you had headaches and you come in and the headaches are gone? Let me see your hand. Thank you, thank you. Ooh, that's good. How many of you sense God doing something right now and in your heart? Let me see your hand. He's doing something. What is he doing? We don't know, but he's doing something. That's the point. If you knew, you'd be God. I barely hang on a stick, so I am sweating. I haven't sweat this bad since I was holding my wife's hand while we were engaged. I remember that. Whew. The only woman I would think about calling, and my hands would sweat. Whew. What a woman. Sweetheart. I'm asking the questions now, and God's listening to the answer. I believe tonight, maybe there are a few here, you're in the throes of a decision. I know people go home, because some of you don't understand what's going on sometimes, and it's just noise, never noise to me, just things that go on. Earth. See, I'm built here, not for earth. I'm built for power, warfare, in a zone that's not even on this earth. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness. Musicians, when we play, we're not just playing here trying to hover. There is a code. There is a power. Let me tell you, back in the day, when people used to fight and get in war, they would get the warriors then and they would whip and beat the other people. They would take their skins of the people that they had beaten in war and they would cover their new drums with their skins and dry them in their enemy's blood in the sun. And the next time they went in war, they'd be beating on the drums made with the skins of the person that they overcome in the last war. So I'm telling you, they know how to do it in the world. But in God's eyes, there's a power different than man's kind of power. 85% of all history has been war. We see it. We smell it. We know it's there. That's why we make a decision. Is Jesus Christ the Lord of your life? Or are you just messing around with it? Tonight, maybe you say, you know, something happened to me tonight. I want to see my life change tonight. Not only will it change but God puts a plan, it's not just a smile on your dial and a skip in your step. Something happens within your heart that separates you. There was this Olympic diver who had a Christian friend. He used to torment him all the time trying to win him to the Lord. He was practicing to be an Olympian. He was in university, best diver there. And he had a future. And he didn't want to know anything about his friends, Jesus, or God, or any of that. And he'd been talking to him for a year, straight on. 
Funny they were still friends, right? One night, he went in to the pool area, climbed up on the highest dying board. No lights were on because the moon was shining in through the highlights and you could see pretty good. He got all the way up to the very top. He got on the edge of the board. And as he put his hands out to dive, he saw the moon had cast a shadow of him on the wall. And it was a cross. He saw it. He was instantly touched. He fell on his face and he repented. And he got back up. The maintenance man had kicked on the lights and he saw that the pool was drained for repairs. I don't know how many people are standing on the edge of their life getting ready to jump into an abyss they think is going to catch them, but it will not without the power and the love of God that he loves you so much that not only will he touch your life and change your life, I'll tell you one more story. In 1979, I had a revival, and I told a story about a duck. A young lady came up. Her husband, she got married later on. Her husband led music for Washington for Jesus. They're worship leaders now. But she was touched in that meeting in 99. I told a duck story. The next night, she brought me a little stuffed duck. She was like 19. This was in 98, 99. And I, it's on my big drum set now. A little story behind it. Sally and Billy went to Grandma and Grandpa. They figured they would go there and, you know, just have a good time. Just spend a little time with the grandparents, right? And while he was there, he was given a slingshot to play with in the woods. And, man, the kid couldn't hit anything with the slingshot. So on the way back, he saw his grandmother's duck way out there and just... For the fun of it, he just took it and lunged it, hit the duck right in the head, and killed it. Bed duck. He was so freaked out, he ran over, took the duck, hit it in the woodpile. But the whole time, his sister Sally had been watching. Ah, so they're inside, and all of a sudden, Grandma says, Come on, Sally, it's time to help Grandma with dishes. And Sally said, you know, Grandma, Johnny told me that he wants to do the dishes tonight. Right? And then Sally looked over at Johnny and says, remember the duck? And he says, yes, Grandma, I'll help you with dishes tonight. No problem. The next night, Grandpa says, come on, Johnny, we're going fishing. And Sally said, no, no. Grandpa, Johnny wants me to go fishing, and he'll stay here and do chores. And she went over to Johnny and says, remember the duck. Oh, boy. The next day, Grandma came to him. He's sitting there, and he says, Grandma, I got something to tell you. I killed your duck. He says, she says, I know. I was in the window. And I saw the rock go, and I saw you kill it, and I saw you hide it. And as soon as you killed it, I forgave you. Right then and there. I was just waiting to see how long you're going to let Sally make a slave of you. I tell you right now, folks, there's people here, the devil's been making a slave by throwing things up of your past, things in your life, about the duck. Who knows what I'm talking about? Remember that time you did that? Remember when you said that? Remember this? Remember that? Well, I'll tell you, folks. Jesus, he was at the window the whole time. He's seen everything that we have done. He's just waiting to see how long we're going to let the devil rule our every walk. 
They're not guilt. Your feelings are not the voice of God. I want to encourage you tonight. If Jesus Christ is not your Lord and Savior, if he is not your Lord, he is neither. I tell you, the opportunity of a lifetime must be seized during a lifetime of that opportunity. And that opportunity is now. There may not be a tomorrow. This is not even about fear. This is about reality. We don't know what tomorrow will hold. But I tell you, Jesus loves you. I want everyone to close their eyes just for a moment. If you can't close them, that's okay. I'm not hung up on that. What would you say right now? You know, Pastor, there's... I got some stuff in my life. I want to lay it right now at Jesus' feet. Maybe you're a musician and you've got stuff in your heart no one knows about. Maybe there's some iniquity hiding in there. Maybe there's something hovering around and God wants to boot that right out. You hear it? That duck thing has been plaguing you, man. You're doing the best thing you do to move on in life. But sometimes a duck is screaming. Remember the duck? But I hear the Spirit of God say, whom the Son will set free will be free indeed because he loves you. I'm going to count the three here tonight. When I hit three, if Christ is not your Lord and slave, there's five kinds of people here tonight. The saved, the backslidden, the lost, the lukewarm, and the not sure. They're all here. Which one are you? If you're not sure you're saved, you're not saved. People say, you know, I walk up to someone, and if I come up to, are you a male or female? He knows immediately. Isn't that wonderful? You go up to someone, you saved? I don't know. You're not saved, man. He knew instantly what he was. People, they don't know. If you die right now, would you go to heaven? Well, I hope so. You don't get the, you get the hell on hope. Hope is not enough. You got to have faith. You got to know. What I'm saying, you have to know. You're his. And maybe you don't really know. You're hoping you are. But sometimes that sits in your heart. We're not going to talk you into anything. But you never know. It's my ministry to dig, to confront, to move at, to move out, to press in, press on. Let the Holy Ghost and by the gifts of the Spirit, discerning the spirits and things of power of God begins to break during the drums and beginning of the word so people are free to make a decision, a free moral agent you are right now to be saved. One, does it make a difference where you're caring from, what your background is? Who you are, what you think you've been done. Two, and that, the, the cold, calculating devil wants you dead, wants you subservient to him and the system. But if you say, you know, I need to repent, Mark, I need to move in a different direction. There's some things in my life. When I hit three right now, if that's you, you know what you want. You get your hand up right now. Yes, you ready? Three, put that hand up. God bless you. Anyone else? Quickly. God bl anyone else? You got stuff you're working on. Amen, amen. So we work on it. Listen, I know I'm preaching to the choir tonight. But you never know who's slipping in. You just never know. And you know, you never know where you were been an hour ago before you got here. What you were searching up on the internet what you were doing within your own heart. Sometimes we don't know. But I encourage people. Make it right. Anyone else? Anyone else? Quickly. Yes, Pastor. I want some things straight. I want us to pray this prayer. Pray it with me, will you? Out loud. Say, Lord. Lord. Thank you for loving me. Thank you. Jesus, Jesus. I just repent. Man, if you got something right now, let it rip right now. Just say, Lord, tell them right now. Say, you're faithful, Lord, to forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. You are my Lord and Savior. You are my strength. Thank you for loving me, for encouraging me. I sense the peace of God here, man. 
He said, I'm just tired. I'm not that tired. I sense the peace of God. How many of you know something was going on? <laughs> Strange, huh? You got to love it. It's okay. I don't worry about that stuff. Listen, sound systems are always interesting. Everywhere I've ever been. A thousand churches I've spoken in, I've seen sound systems blow up. I was, one night I was teaching on Black Sabbath about the dangers of it, and my slide projectors burst in flames. <laughs> that was a weird night. 400 Baptist people ran to the aisles. It was one of those nights. Whew, I'll tell you. So after a while, you just, yeah, I just go with the flow, man. Thank you, Lord. i like this couple to stand up here, please. Mr. Clean and the, and the nice lady next to him. I hear the Spirit of God has put a spirit of intercession in your life. You like to pray and talk to God. But the rubbish that's happened in your family growing up, the things that would happen, I hear the Spirit of God say there has been a rushing and a cleaning and a desire in your heart to see things. Even when you were young, you thought, oh, no, oh, God. But as God who say unto you, did I protect your heart, says the Lord? Did I keep things with inside you, even though you saw things and you said, oh, Lord? And, but, but not even, oh, Lord, but even as a young, you knew me. And I knew you. But see, it's by my spirit, says the Lord, and I'm moving. I put a gift of teaching on you to be able to share and love and be a blessing. I haven't called you ever to back down. You made a, a, you made a statement, and you said, Lord, I will not back down from what I believe. I will stand fast. You've been standing fast. You have promises due to you in the family. You have promises you have believed God for. You are looking to that author and finisher of your faith. So I just say, be encouraged. <laughs> Let's just let God just begin to strengthen you this evening. <laughs> now, there's no accident, says the Lord, that I've placed... A calling on you. You, know, you have all sorts of things sitting inside of you. You got any books, man? You got something going on in your heart? There's all sorts of stuff in your heart, man, you've had since a young person. You have not let come out. Talented. Oh, my goodness. The things that God had placed with inside of you, and it's like they almost wanted to crush it when you're a young person. This is true what God's telling you. Is it not? I know it is. But I'm telling you, I'm encouraging you by the Holy Ghost that he has made you to stand on two feet. You're already tall, bald, and good-looking. It's not even about any of that now. Now it's only about, will I be tall for you, Lord? And you said yes. But I want to tell you something that goes with that yes. Dreams and visions and things that are in your heart that are churning. God can still make a way where there absolutely seems to be no way. A matter of a fact, that is what he does. There is no way. That's why he makes one. So, we just say, hallelujah. Bless God. Just strengthen you this evening. Both of you precious people. God. This black dude, come here, man. Cool the guy, come here. I see God's hand on you, man. I see God's hand on you, man. I want to ask you something. What are you doing about it? Really, totally, I mean fully. You've always been a guy that went 110%. Whatever you've done, and sometimes you feel like there's the weight on you. You know what we're talking about? That, that weight. Well, I'm telling you right now, we break that in Jesus' name. The thing that sometimes might hinder, we break it now. 
God made you man. He never made you to be afraid. You would never have been afraid. You've always said, I will stand up and I will push in and I will make a difference. But not only will you make a difference, you are his. And his hand is on you. And there's no weapon formed against you would prosper. And you do not have to circle the wagons while the enemy throws arrows at you. God has called you to step out of the box. He's not called you to be normal, man. He, you're different. You're a little bit different. Because the calling is to reach out and to be a blessing and be a strength. And you love kids, man. I mean, you just love kids, man. You'd lay down your life for kids. You would lay, you would die. Matter of fact, you've seen them die. I had the Spirit of God say unto you that you'll be able to minister and be a blessing. I don't know anything about you, but God knows you, and God sometimes speaks in the future. But the, the fact of the matter is, God's hand is upon you, son. Like it or not, what people may say, what people may do, you had sold out to him. You sold out. When you sold out, he said, I want absolutely 100% of you, man. I don't care what the white world does, what the black world does. That's neither here nor there. That was brought up in the evilness of every man's heart. But when God calls, he never looks at anything like that. And never had. People will. Well, that's their problem. People never had the problem of being free as much as they had the problem of thinking they were free, believing they were free. When God sets you free, he puts you free for one reason, and that's to make sure that everything he has for you, you would do. But with you, it seems you've got to work a little bit harder. That's why you put a lamp on the left foot. Come with me. Put a lamp on the left foot. You put a lamp on the right foot. The Bible says the word is a lamp feet, and a light. No walking, no light. There is no way. You make a way. The Bible says God makes a way where there is no way. So you take a step. How do you do that? You speak the word of God. That's the lamp. You speak it. And you take a step. And when you take the step of faith, that lamp brightens your path. But now you walk by faith, not by sight. We get hung back. But he says, take another step. The lamp is on the other foot too. And you take another step. And it lights up a little bit more. And the Bible says the path of the just gets brighter and brighter until the day of Jesus Christ. If you stop walking, you stop seeing. Family, rubbish. Sometimes they stop short. This is true past that's not for you you don't stop short ever you don't get lazy you put the word in your heart and you be everything God wants you to be and every time you see somebody around here who's not being that way you don't let that affect who you become I love you man yes, you yeah. Yeah. You don't don't let the devil bully you, man. Come here. Come here. Come here. See what time it is. It's time to obey God. <laughs> Raise your hand. Close your eyes. I think Jesus is going to be a big surprise. I'm telling you, my dear, there's changes. There's things going on. In your heart, in the depth of your heart, sometimes you get so frustrated. I hear the Spirit of God say, and you have your little place, don't you? God, how do I fix this? How do I do this? And God says, be patient. Be patient. Don't move quickly. Be patient. You'll see that I'll make a way where there seems to be no way. Absolutely. And not only that, he will begin to create business opportunities within your talent that will begin to help within the family, 
But there's other things. There's priorities. There's things. You, 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 husband, come here, bro. Come here, man. See rings. There's no word of knowledge. You know, we, we're pretty smart too as people. <laughs> What's your name? Tim. Tim? Nice to meet you, man. Yeah, hey. I'm <laughs> Usher. That's what I am. Right? That's what Pastor Dave is. That's what you are. That's the only reason you're here, is to usher in the presence of God. Because if we don't usher in the presence of God, we don't have anything, man. We got a religion. And religion is man's best effort to find God. Sorry, I just don't have that time. The search for somebody who does not exist in a system they do not accept. I know that by the will of God and by the power of God, he will live inside and he will make a difference. Close your eyes. Father, I thank you for this couple. I ask you, Lord, to use them. I ask you to strengthen their relationship. We all struggle at times in relationships. The woman more than the men because we walk around with the king's crown and say this is the way it is and sometimes the woman they don't want to do what it is they want to slap you upside the head <laughs> but in submission you know you want it but sometimes it doesn't it still leaves you frustrated to work on it it doesn't mean things are bad necessarily you know that Everything's crumbling. It just means that God, we pray and God says, take me to the next level. Take me to the next place. We say, God, which way do I go? Then he points to himself. It just doesn't change. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Let's let God touch you. Come here, son. Yeah, that's you. Good-looking young man. God's hand is on you, son. You like to smile, huh? I like you. I just want to speak blessing over you. You're talented. You have giftings, right? Art. And uh, you do art at all? I sense art in my spirit with the Holy Ghost. Listen, I don't believe in this. I feel this. I, I believe the Holy Spirit says something or he doesn't. The only reason we do the field things, we don't know what the heck who's talking to us. The day you know who's talking to you, talk to them like you know who you're talking about. I hear the Holy Spirit is saying to you, son, and you have gift of art, you have giftings upon your life. There's music sitting inside your soul. And you're a daredevil too. You're not afraid. I hear the Spirit of God, He has not given you the spirit of fear, right? But of power, love, and of a sound mind. So I want to encourage you. Raise your hands. Close your eyes. Father, I ask you to touch this young man. <laughs> Lord, you know, you're the man. You do it. We just, we just say yes, sir. But you are the one that makes the way. <laughs> Take it, son. Let God touch you. You know, when God touches people, they move. But sometimes it's good to yield. <laughs> touch. God touch you. Don't go back yet. It's not time. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to soak. It's not good to fall. It's good to fall when you're ready to soak. Sometimes we fall ahead of time. We never soak. We just lay there and go, mm, I wonder what happened. But on the other hand, courtesy drops are not good. Carpet time is good. When you fall down under the power and you're awake, to me, it's like a cardiac catheterization. You're awake. He rams a fluid in you, goes in your heart. You're sitting there. You know something's going on, but you can't do anything about it. All right? But when you're out cold, he's doing a heart operation, man. You've got to cut you open, keep you out for that. He's working on you. God never pushes people down, try to make fun. God, if you're going down, he's doing something. He's not playing games. God's not into games. God don't play. God touches people. That's what he does. He loves it because he loves people. Right? 
right? <laughs> Take it, son. Yeah. Come here. You get the hair. <laughs> Take it, son. What's your name? Quentin. Quentin. What's your favorite thing to do? I'm going to tell you what it is. Your favorite thing is going to look at people and tell them how much Jesus loves them. You don't have to be a superman of God, minister, or anything like who we think we are. We're not. We're all the same, man. What makes a difference is your obedience. Right, obedience. Incomplete obedience is disobedience. God tells you to give $2 and you give a dollar, no blessing. Tithe starts at 10%. You give 9%, you have no offering. God expects us to do what's right. We expect God to do everything for us. We, you know, we want to uh, give a five-cent a five prayer and want a million-dollar answer. But I hear the Spirit of God say, Than when he made you, man. Sometimes you wonder. You are not an accident when it comes to ministry, when it comes to living. God has an absolute plan for your life. Beyond what you can even understand, I can comprehend, or anybody here can spit out of their gums. We just don't get it, but God gets it, son. And his hand is on you, like it or not. Hey, you're a little different. God makes us different for a reason. He didn't say he makes us weird. He makes us different. The power of God, the strength of God, the elbow, the hand, the nose, the fingers, we, we move together in unity. And the times when we say this person is not as good as me is the day that we've shut our own limbs off. But I hear God is loving on you tonight. Oh, yes. Just loving on you tonight. I love you, my son, with a holy love. I will never leave you or forsake you. You're precious to me. Oh, you're precious to me. I will hold you close through all eternity. Don't you know I have a plan? Don't you know I have a road? I will lead and guide you all you got to do. You say, oh Lord, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll go there, I'll do this, I'll go there, I'll do it again and again and again and again. And my glory will fall, and people will feel loved, and people will be healed, and they'll know it's from above. But you have to, my son, at every step that your feet may place, you must say, I must give that place to the holy place, that God will lead you, that God will prepare you, that God will cement you into his perfect will. Don't you fear, my son, what man will say. Don't fear, my son, what the weather may be. Don't fear, my son, when the devil may say. Remember, remember, remember that day. Sometimes that day did not exist. It's just a lie that's like a cyst that must be cut off. Don't resist. The devil is a liar. He lies. God will never leave you, my son. He'll never forsake you, my son. He loves you with the holy love. Oh, yes, he does. Yes, he does. When I made you all heaven.
and smiled. Don't you know I love you? I'll a hand design you. Some nights you say, oh God, I don't know how I'll get through. But then, then your holy love, it shines from above. And then I know that God is love. I'll not fear and you'll not run. Because God made you special and true. God made you and he's not through. His love is really upon you. When you smile, you sense his presence in you. To sing, to talk, to lead people. Don't worry about those that didn't love you like you desired because the Holy One above He is loving you so perfectly that which is behind is behind and that which is now is now the love of God is working in you oh the love of God is working and the grace of God is working and the healing of God is working don't fear my child he loves you with a holy love Come here, there, a little ribbon in here. What's your name? Allie. Allie. Giftings. Mama says, you know, God gives gifts on the men. He gives them. You know, no one can, uh, can't buy it. No one can give it to you. It can be, of course, brought into existence, of course, through ministry. Uh, all ministry is impartation. Uh, but the fact of the matter is you have a desire to serve God. And you have a desire to love God. But he is encouraging you tonight. Become the warrior that you truly desire. He made you to be that. Don't think about your size. There's no size in the realm of the spirit. There only is the spirit of man that we begin to speak from that. It's not about size. David took Goliath down with a rock. It's not about size. They said he was too big to hit. David said he's too big to miss. That's you. That's you. You're made of stuff like that. Right? Amen. Father, I thank you for this little sweetheart. Encourage your father. Strengthen her. <laughs> Let her know. <laughs> I know that he saves by many or he saves by few. Right? He makes a way. So you know what time it is? Yeah, I know what time it is. Time to eat. Oh, I hope he doesn't. I hope he, Lord, don't let him say, no, it's, it's too late. It's way too late. So what are you going to do? You're going to give 100%. I hear the Holy Spirit say, there's a Holy Ghost heart hunt you've been working on. You've been digging. And sometimes you find some things that you don't want to chuck out. You know what I mean? I mean, when, uh, when Saul came back, he kept Agag. He was supposed to kill Agag, all of them, all the Amalekites, but he brought back the king, right? And sometimes we are willing to get rid of a lot of things 
except the king in our lives. And I hear the Spirit of God say, He's going to help you and bless you. His hand is on you. And I tell you, Father, I just ask you. I hear the Spirit of God say, be gentle with her. Be gentle. Be gentle. Because I hear the Spirit of God say that He is ministering, <laughs> strengthening. some stuff tonight and he loves you that's what he wants to tell you more than anything else is how much he loves you do you hear it that she's just saying oh I love you sometimes oh but no he's saying oh I love you I love you with a holy love I love you with a holy love I will never leave you I will never forsake you that's the promise amen 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 thank you sir hallelujah well oh. I'll see you in the morning. Love you guys. Amen.